My interest in doing this kind of lectures is to raise the awareness of what I consider, this is all my personal opinion, a profound ignorance about ADHD. We all picture the ADHD like a little kid running around, knocking chairs, the parents are pulling the hair, and uh, they don't know what else to do. And then you have the other type of families where they think that everything is just a, just a slap it, the, the kid, and he'll be fine. The kids in the, in the old time, they never did this. And there's ignorance. Ignorance is sometimes even in clinicians. So that's why I wanted to, uh, that's my main point of the lecture then. What is, what isn't, how can be treated, and also interesting point about how the treatment actually changed through the country, believe it or not. So what is ADHD, as you can see, to see if this works, uh, is most common psychiatric in, in children globally, four to five. The latest data said five percent of the population, and if you see in the, the adult, you have 5%. So I think if we can think about 5%. Think, multiply the population of the United States and uh, withdraw 5%, and that's the amount of ADHD that we see around. If we, uh, as we talk more, you'll see ADHD is every, everywhere. And if you think around your lives, you'll see people even in your own family with ADHD. And the consequences are far past the school, also that's very important. And the, the, the progress in, in, in life, you know? So uh, Lao Tzu, the ancient uh, Chinese master, used to say, watch your thoughts, they become actions. Watch your actions, and he come down, they finally said, watch the, 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 your habits will become character. So your character become your thoughts, like Lao Tzu says. But if your thoughts are all over the place, your character will be all over the place as well. And that's the, the main point. So I told you, the election, we can finish, that's it. That, that was the election. <laughs> so, so now, let's go. So see, this is important, because in 2011, from the Center for Disease Control, you can see, interesting point, how these, country, these, country, these states, they have a lot of the kids diagnosed with a, a, a ADHD ever. See, all this state over here, it seems like there's no ADHD in Arizona, that's it. They, they don't have any. So, so you have some in here, but now here comes the more interesting thing. When you look at the data about the, the one treated, it, everything changed. Let me go back and show you. Look at this. The states where they ever been diagnosed, and then you notice how you have the East Coast, uh, the West Coast, well, they soft anyway. But you can look at this part. Now, when you change to the treatment, and Texas, by the way, see, not that hard in terms of the diagnosis, and that's what I see. I mean, a lot of the, in San Antonio, I see an epidemic of people, adults and children, they are not diagnosed. And in fact, come to me, these parents bring me the, 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 the kids thinking they're bipolar. Somebody told them it's bipolar. And sometimes they are, it can be both. But a lot of times, oh, another one, dyslexia. That's something that blew me away when I came to these areas, the epidemic of dyslexia. Every kid that came to me had been dyslexic, diagnosed. I think it's easy to say you are dyslexic. And I don't doubt it, you know? But I, I'm still looking for the dyslexic. In my, because when I treated, I tested like I'm gonna show you, and I treated the dyslexic over. And some tough cases, sometimes I, and then I tested for cognition. We do that too with another test, it tests a stroop test, you know, the memory, et cetera. But I tested already treated for attention deficit. And the test is normal. The behavior is normal. So where was the, 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 the dyslexia? There was none. It was the issue of the untreated. But anyway, so this is what it is. But look at the treatment now. Texas is one of the one, the one that has the, 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 the tr tr treatment there. And so this state, and this state in the center, where they're kind of like soft, it become more treated now. So I guess for the ones that have the attention deficit, uh, the majority, we are one of the states that at least, at least we can say people are open to the treatment. That's my point. So see, this is the, uh, the, the key finding from then to the center of this disease control. 11% of 6.4 million have been diagnosed in 2011. The percentage, increase 
7.8, 9.5, 11%. So the awareness is increasing. The rate of increase 3% per year. Kind of busy slide, so I'm going to go light over. So in case any have the attention deficit, I'm not going to get lost. <laughs> I can say. <laughs> so I go, I'm used to that. You get to the point, you know. The, the, the average age is seven. We're going to talk about that now at the new DSM-5 diagnosis, the prevalence, you know, in, in terms of it, it changed. Of course it changed. The awareness of the cultural of the people changed because the parents determined the treatment. They don't want to take it to the doctor. You go from, again, the West 5.7 to Kentucky 18%. So you see how it's so important to analyze also where we live and what kind of mentality the people have towards this condition. So the attention briefly, and then we, we kind of talk about it for a minute, and then we'll go back into that again in a, in a second. But I mean, it's best to describe, you know what, the sustained focus, so you need to concentrate. The, uh, this is the ability to respond directly to the specific visual, or the auditory, or the tactile, anything, any stimuli. But the key is also sustain that attention. For example, uh, uh, in kids, let, let's go to this. I mean, like, remember the, uh, the type of uh, idea you do have the kid running, but sometime in the conversation, they have to be constant in motion. I'm going to tell you one interesting point about that. Uh, the difficulties coming down, this is a key symptom because they, what they're really doing is overcompensation for, for the complex process. If you think that you have in your brain a bottleneck, and the, that the, the bottleneck, all the thoughts have to go through it. So you have a traffic jam of thoughts in here. So what happened is this area is in turmoil because I need to really make, make quickly sense of what is happening in front of me. But I can make quick sense, and you see how we can measure the variation of the processing speed of the thoughts, set millisecond by millisecond. So you got this turmoil right here in this bottleneck, but the neighborhoods around, they really work in over time to compensate for that problem. Hence, the hyperactivity. Because the hyperactivity is just the body trying to fight this uh, clogged up thing, so I'm working harder around. So that's why you see the difficulty in children to come. So another thing is the diminished attention. Of course, you need to be careful because people with the, the kids with autism have that too. Uh, the, the autism is different. They have no capacity to experience the necessity to be loved, to be touched, to be hugged. That's different. In the kids with the attention deficit, they're too busy. So you're trying to hug it and they might respond with a big, big white smile to your hug but only for 10 seconds. And then I'm busy, I need to get going. But can, can you sit with me to watch a movie a little bit? No, I can't. They don't know why, because the turmoil, it, it let me react normal to your hoggy mom, and I smile big. The autistic kid is not gonna do that. He's gonna be completely somber, detached from, from it all. The attention deficit, no. He might smile for a second, I gotta get going. I don't know if anybody had a, a, a uh, German Shepherds. Have you ever have dog G German Shepherds? To me, they all have ADHD. And, <laughs> and, and you can play with them for a second, then you have to get going. They're always busy, you know, checking around. I have one, and that's what it is. So this is important. This is a slide. I put it there to bring the attention to the fact that, that it's not just the, the usual. They have to be in motion. Another thing I failed to tell you, through adulthood, the adulthood also uh, go into that. Harvard did a study on that where they mimic an office. Very interesting. They spend a lot of money in the study. They mimic an office that is fake and they put in their tasks that were fake and supervisors that were fake. So the people participating in the study have to go through months or, uh, you know, working in something that is not. But they working and have uh, guidelines and the tasks and, and they study that. The adult with attention deficit have an internal restlessness. It was uh, coined in, in Harvard, the duck, D-U-C-K syndrome. You know the duck is swimming smooth, but you see the legs is going under the water. <laughs> so, somebody in Harvard thought to call it the duck syndrome because the adult no longer run around, but it doesn't matter. He has still the traffic jam. He has the neighborhood overworking. So he got, I got to move somehow. 
So I got to change in what I'm standing. I need to kind of maybe walk around. I need to change activities quickly. And why are you driven to do that? What did you say your car? You bought it six months ago. No, I want, I want a new car. But because the new car might give me something. I need something because this thing, it doesn't let me be relaxed inside. When I was a kid, I was trumping over all the furniture. As an adult, I can't do that. But now I do other things that become unbearable for the family and the people around them. So uh, leading to that, there is also the attention. And the kid, you can see that. Uh, even a teacher, the la one, one of the time of the, of, the, of the lecture in one of the school nearby, one of the teachers said, how come they play video games so much? How, why? And they're not, they have the attention deficit. The problem with the video is that it's very intense. And then if you have the traffic jam, in the back, you have a back door where in, things that are fun and new can escape. So I can be having a lot of trouble in my traffic jam, but oh, if you bring me something new, I can deal with that now. So I have a constant seeking of something new. Anybody would like to go to Hawaii, but anybody would like to have to, to, to the movies like today, Friday, but that's normal. The, the people with attention deficit, they need that. They need the newness because the, new, the newness is gonna give me a relief from my traffic jam. I must still have the problem here. The homework might be behind. My boss is upset with me. Maybe I haven't finished my work, but I'm going to the movies. Because then I have the relief, at least for an hour. But maybe half of the movie I get bored and leave, but still, <laughs> it, was, it was something some, something new. So this has become dangerous after a while. Like the example that I gave you a minute ago about bought the car and I need to sell it. Why? Because seeking for the new brings instability in the children and in the adults. So, and that leads to the other part, the crime, see, that's the thing. In England, they've been very uh, uh, aware for that, but also in the United States, it's almost like it's, uh, you don't hear that. In, in reality, in over there, the, the, the calculation they did was between 20 to, sorry, 45% of the convicts have ADHD. And if you see the movies of being in, in prison or those that have gone to prison, to hopefully not to be in prison, but just to visit, you can see the sense of restlessness in those men and, and women in the movies that you see about the National Geographic in prison. And why is that? Because almost half of them have attention deficit. The fact that they were constant seeking for the new, the fact that the normal is not enough for me because I got my jam, it led me to break the law. That's interesting, it's new. It gave me some kind of stamina and I go through the back door and I feel normal. And then once I get in there, the usual thing about prison is that you need to be quiet, go by the, by the rules and make no wave, right? Oh no, now I'm gonna start in the clicking and I'm talking with other people and the guard and put me in isolation. And the majority of problems you see in the penal system is ADHD, they can't imagine locked up, it's even worse. So that's one point that we need to remember on those parents that are so intense about not giving medication to my child. In reality, you can even, I mean, not everybody ADHD go to prison, but there is a great chance for drugs and break the law in my constant pursuit of the backdoor fun. So just some stats, you know, 10 times more they quit school seven more times, you never completed high school. This is un unbelievable, though, those number. Uh, the uh, traffic accident, I didn't put it there, but it's about two, two to three times the normal population having tra traffic accident. For example, one third of the red patient with attention deficit has another relative with it. I can tell you, if I do an evaluation, somebody has to be attention deficit in the family. Even if it is a kid and the parents immediately said, no, 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 none of us attention deficit. And after half an hour talking to the mom, I realized she has attention deficit. She's not paying attention to what I'm saying. She's busy, she's moving. <laughs> and then I say, you got attention deficit too. I have family that I treat three generations. I started with a little kid, then I treated one of the parents, and they brought me like a semi-young grandparents. My oldest attention deficit patient has almost 75 years old. And I have a lady retired, just received 65. And the, I see both of her uh, son, and they said, Mom, you gotta go see Dr. Dayanos. 
And at that age, she started now, and she's uh, well-to-do, and now she said, I'm normal now. I can travel. I enjoy more now than for the last uh, years of my, my life. So you can see amazing in that age how still treating her has been beneficial. So anyway, so we got that. See, 3% of the adult, we talk about that. Uh, this is important because also, remember when I told you about the issue with the dyslexia, uh, just to stamp at the kid with the dyslexia doesn't mean anything. It could be a comorbidity. It might be dyslexia plus, although I tell you, uh, it's difficult to find those, but one third says it's that. 50% of the adults you know, in rehab drugs, like I said before, 35% of the adults who fail the rehabs for drugs have the, the attention deficit. We fit the, the, with the same issue that we have talked be before. So it goes to every level of the patient um, life. I can tell you, I got at least four physicians, they my, my patient for the ADHD. One of them actually have great responsibilities at a hospital. Great doctor, but they need the medication. I have a re radiologist, he couldn't even work if he doesn't get the medication. So he takes it in the afternoon so he can read the MRIs because otherwise it's a mess. I, I had an OBGYN doctor. She had to close her practice because she was so overwhelmed, angry with everybody. And then when she started treating, uh, well, a little too late, she had closed the practice because we, as a physician, it's a lot of uh, multitasking all the time and she couldn't handle it. So I got some, the nurses, teachers, and then now we get into the relationships. That's another one. Imagine, if you as an adult always need to require something new, good luck with the marriage. Because then after a while, you, if you are a man in San Antonio, that's a problem. And then girls also get tired of things. They get irritated, they get upset, they get frustrated. Remember, you've been dealing with this, and now you tell me what? And then that's a problem. The relationship needs to be a mutual flexibility in order to flow for years married. So where's the flexibility in this partner? Where I'm already overwhelmed here, and you tell me that I need to work extra for you or do this and that? and that the argument be begin. And in the argument, they're not listening either because it's difficult. The more stressful or angry or irritable you are, anybody, ADHD or not, your attention goes down, that's normal. With depression, people get ADHD. It's not ADHD, it's the lack of concentration from being depressed. But in an argument, that goes down. Imagine if you already have attention deficit and you have an argument with your spouse, then the problem continues. That's why there is twice the rate of the divorce, and then you have the injury. That's another thing that I look into kids. Uh, they tell me they don't have ADHD, but it's always breaking something in the bone and they that, and, uh, and that's exactly right. They have three times more, 65% more chances to do that. The adults, we kind of did that about the divorce ahead of time, but it's here. We talk about the, the issue with the um, breaking the law, uh, the, the accidents. And then, see, this is, a, this is another one. This is a big one. A lot of these teenager girls, they get pregnant. Uh, and then you ask them, why did you use some protection? But they don't have time for that. They got their boyfriend, they get excited. They normally don't think through. At that moment, you think they're gonna think through? They don't. And that's, that's what happened. And then they have keeping friends, obviously, for the same reason that they divorce, the same principle. To have friends, you need to be flexible with them they shortcomings and you say it's okay, Bob is like that. But with attention deficit, you don't do that. You get irritated easily. 